Coronamids, estimated to have over 10,000 species worldwide, are a hugely important food source, not just for salmonids, but for any fish that live in lakes and ponds and, yes, rivers too. And it's said that in a typical still water, the midge biomass is greater than all the other insects combined. Well, who came up with that fact, you might be wondering. Well, I was too, so I looked it up. And it turns out there are a lot of scientific articles out there published on midges and their biomass and different ecosystems. And I believe it, not just from the scientific literature, but from practical experience. I was out on the Savage River just last week, took my net and scraped it through the gravel, and the midge larva I found outnumbered the mayfly nymphs and caddis pupa at least five to one. So what exactly are coronamids, or what we colloquially call midges? Well, in their adult form, they look kind of like mosquitoes, but they don't bite. In fact, they don't even have mouths. They don't eat. They only live for three or four days. But in their larval or pupil form, they're just these stubby-like little worm things. Kind of like mosquito larvae, which is almost exactly what they are, maybe just a little bit bigger. Oftentimes they're dark, sometimes a little bit translucent, and in highly oxygenated water you'll find a lot of red ones. Now the most popular fly pattern for midge larvae or pupa, it's the zebra midge. A very easy to tie pattern, can be super effective, but this one I'm about to show you today, also easy to tie, and in some situations can be more effective than a zebra midge. Maybe it's late in the season, or you're in heavily fished water, and the sight of a bead is going to have every fish running for cover. A pattern like this one might just save the day for you. So it's definitely worth having a few of these in your box. Maybe a couple different sizes and a couple different colors. It's a cool pattern. I think you're going to like it. Let's give it a shot. So there's one in the vise, a midge pupa. Fairly generic pattern. Not a zebra midge, but, you know, fairly similar to it. Now, best sizes for this... Probably, you know, 16, 18s, and 20 ranges. I'm gonna go on a 16. This is a fire hole hook. It's actually a two extra stout. I'm gonna catch it in right there. We might adjust it in the, in the vise in just a minute when we need to get this thread well around the bend. We go ahead and lay a base down. Let's take it all the way to the back. And I want to go a little bit farther around than that, so I'm going to just tilt it, the hook, in my vise so I can get, oh, well around it right here. Okay. And we might have to do this just a couple of times throughout the tie, but that's fine. And remember that every wrap you put on the hook, you're putting another twist in your bobbin holder. So what you'll want to do here is occasionally spin it counterclockwise to let it lay flat. But before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and catch in my rib. This is a UTC Ultra Wire in silver, and I'm using a size small. You might think, oh, you're not gonna be able to see this, but you will. I promise you, wait till the end, you'll see it. But if you wanted to go up to a brassy, that'd be fine too. So let's catch this in. My goal here is just try and keep this parallel uh, in the same spot on the hook where I started it to go all the way around, okay. And now we can spend a little bit of time trying to shape this body right here. See how the, that thread, it's a little bit corded up right there. So what you might wanna do, just pull it out, let it spin counterclockwise for a, a few seconds. And now I'm laying my thread flat and I can get some flat wraps right here, but it's not really a big deal because we're gonna put quite a bit of UV resin on it. Okay, so I'm just trying to keep this laying a little bit flat. Take my thread up here right behind the eye where I'm going to catch off this rib. Now just wrap this up. Six or seven good turns, really your preference to how close you want these. Okay, now when you get it up here, let's put a couple of tight wraps to really lock this in. I'd say a good two or three. I'm gonna put some tension on this thread while I spin that off. Check and make sure you didn't leave a little sharp nub right there. In this case, I didn't, but if you did, you'll just wanna put a few extra loose wraps to uh, bury it. Okay, now instead of a head, this little midge has a, you know, a white little antron head. And somebody asked me in the last video, what did I use? And it's just these things right here. Just 
small antron fibers and I'll pull a little tuft out about like this right here and really I'm going to get about half what I think I need. Catch it in right here with a pinch wrap, a couple wraps back. Okay, now just fold it up and catch it back in. So that's why I used about half the thickness of a piece that I need. Okay, just let it right, uh, go, you know, right up to the eye there, really. Now you might want to work on this head area. A few extra thread wraps to get you kind of a, a little bump right here, kind of a little, you know, head, I guess. I think that's going to be fine right there. Let's go ahead and whip finish this one. And before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and trim this so that it won't get in the way of my whip finish. And this one, it's really pretty short. Just something like that right there. Okay, now let's whip finish it. Now this is a fun part of this fly, the UV resin. And I, I keep mine in this dirty little applicator bottle right here. It's got a thin end on it. And it doesn't take quite as much as you might think, but it does take a good bit. You know, it's more than just a head. So we'll take a bead all the way up and then we'll brush it around. Now I might need just a little bit more up here near the head. Okay, and I think that's gonna be fine right there. One of the coolest things I like about this Regal Revolution vise, you can give it a spin and it will spin many times with just one turn. Then just put your light on it for, oh, 15 seconds or so. And there you go, just a little red midge pupa. Super easy pattern, but these flies can be so effective. So that's it, my friends. I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care, and we'll see you next time.